You ever seen a propeller that doesn't actually look like a propeller? One that doesn't spin the way you'd expect, but sideways, almost like a paddle wheel. We're talking about a bizarre, almost cartoonish mechanism that, believe it or not, might be the key to a quieter, sharper, and totally different way of flying. It's been hiding in plain sight, not in the sky, but under the ocean. For decades, this thing has been pushing tugboats sideways with this smooth, almost impossible grace. And now, engineers are pulling it out of the water and into the air. Cycloidal propulsion. Most people have never even heard that phrase, but behind it lies a concept that could rewrite the future of air travel forever. So, how did it all begin? Why now? And is this strange, sideways spinning invention really the future of flight? That's what we're answering in today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, please support us with a like. It really helps the channel. Long before drones buzzed over our heads, long before Silicon Valley startups started promising flying taxis, a few eccentric inventors were already trying to break the rules of flight. Back in 1909, a Russian engineer named Yagorivich Dukovsky sketched out a flying machine powered not by spinning propellers, but by rotating airfoils arranged in a loop. It didn't work, but the seed was planted. In the years that followed, Inventors across Europe and America kept tinkering with similar ideas. One guy built a full-scale aircraft that looked more like a farm harvester with wings. Another insisted his machine would flap through the air like a giant mechanical goose. That one ended in fraud charges. Almost all of these machines failed. Money dried up, scientific journals mocked the designs, and slowly, cycloidal propulsion just faded into obscurity. But here's the crazy part. Even when they failed, those strange machines moved differently. They didn't tilt like airplanes. They didn't bank like helicopters. They slid sideways. They pivoted in midair. They promised agility that no fixed-wing aircraft could ever touch. The idea wasn't dead. It was just waiting. Waiting for another field entirely to finally make that strange motion useful. Not in the sky, but in the water. The real breakthrough didn't come from above, it came from below, the ocean. In the 1930s, an Austrian engineer named Ernst Schneider refined a rotating propulsion system for ships, vertical blades spinning in a circle, each blade constantly shifting its angle second by second. The result? The Voith Schneider Propeller, or VSP, and it changed everything. Unlike a normal ship propeller, which just shoves water backwards, the VSP could push in literally any direction, sideways, diagonal, even full rotation, without the ship itself having to turn. Tugboats equipped with this thing could slide into tight docks, spin around in place. Ferries could maneuver with surgeon-like precision even in brutal weather. World War II slowed it down for a bit, but when peace returned, the maritime industry saw the advantages immediately. This wasn't just more efficient, it was safer, more controllable, perfect for crowded harbors. And as the decades rolled on, the tech only got better. Hydrodynamic tuning made them smoother, new alloys made them tougher, control systems became lightning fast. Pretty soon, the VSP wasn't just moving boats, it was powering cranes, driving underwater turbines, keeping massive research vessels stable in dangerous seas. And the question became obvious. If this works so brilliantly in water, why not try it again, in the air? Taking something that thrives underwater and making it fly? That sounds like sci-fi. But that's exactly what today's engineers are attempting with cycloidal propulsion. The logic is beautiful. If a spinning ring of blades can steer a tugboat sideways through a crowded dock, maybe it can let a flying machine hover, twist, and land with the same impossible grace. But here's the problem. Air isn't water. Air is thin. It's unforgiving. Forces change faster. Vibrations hit harder. And in the sky, every ounce of weight matters. This isn't just a matter of swapping the medium. It's a full rewrite of the engineering playbook. From the materials used in the rotors to the algorithms that control each tiny blade, 
it all had to be reinvented. Ships can afford slow, steady adjustments. Aircraft? They need reactions in milliseconds. Gusts of wind and turbulence, shifting payloads. Any of it can throw a craft off balance instantly. But here's why engineers love it. If it works, it could solve one of aviation's biggest headaches, control. Helicopters need complicated swash plates and tail rotors just to keep stable. Tilt rotors, they've got to rotate their entire engines. But a cycloidal rotor, it can shift direction without moving the craft at all. That means true vector thrust, any direction, instantly. Compact aircraft that can weave through skyscrapers, hover silently in place, and maneuver with a kind of precision no conventional rotor can match. At first glance, a cycloidal rotor looks insane, like some mad scientist's experiment, a ring of vertical blades spinning in a circle. But the secret isn't the spin, it's what the blades do while they spin. Each blade isn't fixed, it pivots, and depending on where it is in the circle, it points in a different direction. That constant pivoting is what generates thrust. It's not just spinning, it's a perfectly timed dance. Picture four blades spinning clockwise. If you want the craft to rise, the front blade tilts outward, the back one tilts inward, and the ones on the sides flatten out to cut drag. Then, as they rotate, each blade shifts its angle mid-spin, always adjusting to keep the thrust where you want it. Old-school inventors did this with gears, rods, and linkages moving in perfect sync. Today, servo motors, tiny actuators adjusting each blade thousands of times per second, guided by sensors. That means thrust in any direction, forward, backward, sideways, even spinning the craft around on the spot without tilting or banking. And unlike a traditional propeller where fast-moving tips cause turbulence and noise, every blade here moves at the same speed. That makes it quieter, smoother, more predictable. Elegant, complicated, and honestly kind of mesmerizing to watch in action. So why are engineers so obsessed? It's not just novelty. It's what this could unlock. Think about it. Urban air mobility is no longer sci-fi. It's becoming a real industry. Flying taxis, emergency drones, cargo drones, all of it needs control and safety. And cycloidal propulsion offers something no traditional design can, total thrust control without trade-offs. Drones today tilt their whole body just to move forward. That's fine in open skies, but in crowded cities with tight clearances and tricky winds, tilting isn't good enough. Cycloidal rotors shift thrust instantly. That means smoother rides, tighter landings, safer maneuvers around skyscrapers and bridges. They're also quieter. No screaming blade tips, no giant whirling discs. A softer noise signature, perfect for city skies where nobody wants a swarm of buzzing helicopters overhead. And redundancy? Game changer. In a regular quadcopter, if one rotor dies, you're spiraling. In a cycloidal setup, the system might just compensate, keeping you steady. Of course, it's not perfect. The systems are heavy, they're complex. All those moving parts are under insane stress. Precision costs money, and right now, energy efficiency isn't as good as more conventional rotors. But the potential is undeniable, and that's why some companies are going all in. In a quiet Austrian lab, a company called Cyclotech has been chasing this dream for more than 15 years. Long before flying cars became a buzzword, these guys were building the real thing. Their prototype? A lightweight, carbon-framed craft fitted with four cycloidal rotors. It already flies. The whole vehicle weighs just 83 kilos. Almost half of that is rotors alone. Each rotor spins up to 3,100 RPM and can shift thrust direction almost instantly. They've flown it tethered indoors. They've flown it freely outdoors with approval from European aviation regulators. Look at it and you'll think you're staring at a sketch ripped out of a sci-fi comic. No propellers, no tilting wings, just four circular rotors spinning in eerie silence. In 2023, Cyclotech secured over $20 million to keep pushing forward. But here's what they're not saying yet. Flight times, battery strategies, or how they'll handle the sheer weight of energy storage. So yeah, the tech works, the craft can fly. But the question is, does it really solve a problem? 
or is it just a more complicated way of doing the same thing? Cyclotech's design is bold, but it's not the only game in town. The Jetson 1, a simple, lightweight craft using traditional parts, is already flying today. It carries a pilot, stays airborne for 20 minutes, and doesn't need exotic engineering. So why keep chasing cycloidal propulsion? Maybe it's the maneuverability, maybe it's the quieter city flights, or maybe it's about control, pure surgical precision in crowded skies where every move matters. The truth is, cycloidal rotors still need to prove they're worth the complexity. But there's something poetic about this whole thing. A forgotten concept, sideways spinning blades that everyone laughed at a century ago, is being reimagined. Not to copy what already works, but to explore what might work better. And who knows, maybe this strange sideways dance of blades is exactly what the future of flight looks like.